So now that I had some time to actually play around with DaVinci Resolve 17 and get some time with the new modifier that was added into Fusion, I can now kind of go over it a bit, uh, show you some of the cool things that I was able to create with it and maybe give you a better understanding of how it works. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Explore a wide selection of pre-made creative tools for DaVinci Resolve like titles, transitions, slideshows and infographs like bar charts and callouts, and much, much more. Link in the description for more information. All right, so I ended up making this little uh, diagram here uh, to kind of represent it. Now, obviously, this is all completely made in Fusion. Um, and the big thing to take away here is obviously the time across the top. This isn't one, meaning all the way over here, one ends up like being right in here if I click. Um, let's actually see where that is, right here. So 120 is where one would be, you know, where the end of the path is. But what you were actually looking at here is up here, there is a value, the current input value. So that is the value in which we're putting into the system. And these are all of the different results we get with this modifier. Um, they're all taking the same value, but they're all uh, interpolating, or they all have a different uh, profile when it comes to easing uh, added onto them. So. If you don't know how to get into the modifier, I'm simply just going to open up something here that just has some values, and it doesn't matter what value you pick, but you can always pick any value that you can add in animation. So um, any time that you see a keyframe, that is a variable that you can add some type of uh, modifier on top of. And any modifier will, well, I don't wanna say any, but most modifiers you can manipulate anything. If it's in 3D space, any of the 3D nodes, any of the um, particle nodes, any nodes uh, you can do. So I'm just going to show on this random bitmap um, soft edge, it doesn't really matter. I just wanna show you how to get into it. So any of them, you just right click, go into modifiers and you have all your different modifiers. And we're just going to go into the animation curve and we will open this up. And by default, it's going to be on transition. This is if you're going to be making a transition for like the edit page, something that is going to be editable. Uh, Easiest way to put it is when you put something on the edit page, it's going to be making a fusion comp. And that fusion comp is going to have different parameters based on where it's put into the project. And this is this the transition is going to be looking at what that modifier or that, excuse me, what that transition or that fusion comp length is. Duration's the same thing, but it's uh, when you make a fusion comp, it's going to pull the duration. And what that means is, let's say you have a, uh, a fusion comp that is 2,000 um, frames long. It's going to, at one side, it's going to be a zero. At the other side, it's going to be a one. And throughout the whole thing, it's going to go from zero to one over the, you know, however many frames the fusion comp is. That's what it's going to get. And then we have custom. Custom, we can put an input on here and we can make it anything we want. And the cool thing with this is now we can add on additional modifiers that go into the input of this. And further on, I will explain um, this because I actually use it in another uh, comp that I'll show you here in a second. But you can manually add in different stuff in here, right? And then we have the curve linear, meaning just zero to one. It's just a straight shot, straight line that goes from zero to one. You can also open up easing, and that's where all of these different ones are in here. Here is an idea here uh, using the bounce. We can see that the red one, it bounces a couple times. And all of these different ones, you can see the different results based on the input. So that's this input here. And remember, like I was saying, if we switch it over to transition or whatever, it's going to make one end of it zero and then the end of it to be a one. So we can see over that time, as this is plotted, we can see what would happen with that value. Maybe I should have made a, a, a global value showing here uh, what's happening, but that's pretty much it. They're all being input the same value, but we're getting different results. This makes it very easy to add in easing on different values that we input into this. Uh, when we come down to scaling, this is going to be the scaling on the input. So if we have a scaling of two, 
that means we're going to double whatever you know the input is. If we have a scaling of one, it's just going to be uh, you know one one to one. If we have a scaling of two, whatever is up here, it's going to be doubled, right? So the scale is going to be doubled. If we have a fifty in the input, it's going to be a hundred, and so on. Offset is going to be a offset that is outside of these two here. Before I tell you offset, I want to explain each of these two. So we. Uh, the clip low and clip high, if we would set this to something really high or really low that would go outside of the range of zero to one, um, this is going to clip zero to one. Uh, the offset is going to be a value that is going to be added on top of whatever the outcome is on scaling. So if we get scaling that goes to two uh, and we put a 0.5 in here, it's going to be 2.5. If we just leave it at scaling uh, as one, and let's say we clip it, but we wanna change the scale so that it's increased more, it'll only go to one, but then the offset will then get added after that. So whatever we put our offset in isn't going to be hindered by our clip low and clip high. Timing scale, it's going to be the same exact thing. Um, you know, like we had up here for the duration. Uh, if we do the duration, uh, we're gonna have a zero to one. If we change the scaling to 0.5 halfway through the clip, it's going to then stop uh, or it's going to get to one, right? And then the rest of the clip, it's going to just con keep continuously, um, you know, be done from there because we're, we're shrinking the, the duration, right? Or we can make the duration longer. And then offset is going to be an offset of, whatever it is. So maybe we want it to start sooner or maybe we want it to start later. That's going to be the offset. Uh, mirror is going to um, play our whatever our input is, right? It's going to play our input with our curve and everything else added to it. But then after it's done playing our input, it's going to uh, play it in reverse um, to then have everything go back down to zero. Invert, it's going to change the curve. So like how we have all of this go up, if I was to change invert, it would all go the other way. It would start high and then go low and bounce low. Um, so that's how that would work. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much this. Uh, we can see our output zero to one. Obviously some of these go above one, right? If we did the clipping, I think it would then clip here. Uh, we can actually take a look and, and, and see how that is. So if we come into here, that's our one that goes up. So let's just stop this. I'm going to clear the cache and we'll come back to the beginning here. I got to turn or reset our trails and then I'm just going to come in and then do a high clip, right? Because we're going to clip the high. So let's see what happens here. That this, this is this uh, teal. Um, so we go up and then we clip because remember before it was going up and then we're coming down. And then so anytime we get up to the one, it's going to then clip. So that's the difference there with the high clip there. So let me just turn that off and we'll go back and I'll show you the other way. All right. So now if we play this, it's going to go all the way up and it doesn't get that clip and comes back down. So that's how that plays out. All right, so I made that whole <laughs> whole thing so I can kind of explain to you how this works. Uh, let's jump over to the next project that I had set up here. So this one is, I don't know if we, if I, I, I think I went over this, uh, with the or I didn't. So I went over linear, right? It's just a, a, a straight shot. So let's just do this quick. Um, linear, super basic. It's just going to be a straight line, right? from uh, zero to one, zero to one, just a straight line going all the way across, right? It's linear. Uh, most people know that, some, I guess some don't, so there is that. Uh, but then we can also make our own custom curve. So this is a completely custom curve. It starts out um, looking, uh, looking like that, and then we can come in here and we can make this however we want, right? We can make this however we want it to look, and we can also uh, highlight them, hit F to get our uh, little thing there, but we can see that this is pretty custom, right? And so how this works is obviously for the input, over here, it's going to uh, uh, start, and then it's going to end. Our input is always our start to end, kind of like time, start to end. But where time really comes in is for these top two up here, unless you switch it over to custom, and then we can kind of set that.
right? So here uh, we're using a custom input. So over here is zero, and then 120 is going to be where our one is going to be represented. And so now, but over the course of this, we're going to be going up a little bit past uh, 0.5, so probably 0.6, come down below, come down again, go up, and then go up. And we can always click on these and grab the uh, handles and move this however we want. So uh, now let's see what this looks like when it gets plotted. And so we can see, now I'm just plotting um, values here so you can get an idea, but this can, this can control anything. We can control uh, line thickness, you can control character size, you can control uh, this, positions of things, you can control just about anything. But I'm just kind of showing you because I feel like this is the easiest way to, to show how this works. Um, so here we go, we got our, our custom curve, right? Exactly like we see in here is exactly how our custom curve goes in. And uh, to just show you that this is, you know, exactly what I'm saying it is, I'll bring it back. We will reset and now we will do whatever this thing is, right? So exactly how I was explaining it is kind of what it's going to do here. Uh, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. And then we can see up here is our value, right? So now I wanted to show you um, uh, one more thing. So I'm gonna come into here, I'm going to turn this on, come over to here and turn this on as well. So then now turning this one on, we can see like we're getting the same exact uh, values, but based on that custom curve, we can do something completely different. Now, because this is just an input, we could do this input wherever we want it to, right? So finally, I wanted to show you the couple of different ways that you would be able to implement this. Um, I was trying to think of a, a bunch of like very simple, simple ways to show how this works uh, within the uh, fusion page without having to make a, a macro and going into the edit page and kind of explaining how it works but not actually being able to show it. So it was kind of difficult to come up with an idea. But I think showing this will kind of explain this um, uh, probably the best way I can. So I made a, um, <laughs> I made this project that looks kind of like the um, audio meters and uh, let's close this up a bit. I'm just going to get rid of these two and I'm just going to show you just this. So one of the things that I did is I went into each one of these and I added that modifier on. And for the input, because we these are all just values, right? And so we can get, we can get values from other things, we can put additional modifiers on it if they're editable, or excuse me, um, we can add an animation onto something and add keyframes, right? So. Uh, what I did is I just, I'm pulling, I'm just using uh, an expression to pull a value from another uh, tool. So it's a custom tool one and it's just the number in one, right? And all that really is, is it's just pulling a value from another tool. So it could be any tool, but it's just this tool here. And I'm just pulling this first one, number in one, I'm just pulling this value. So it's just pulling this value, but one of the things that I did to this value, so I don't have to add any keyframes, is you just right click, modifier, and in this modifier, I used a shake modifier. And what that does is you say a range of numbers, right? So I wanna go in between 15, 0.15 to 0.866, just random numbers. And then uh, the next one up here, this is just a smoothness scale. So over a certain amount of frames, um, there can be so many uh, uh, adjustments, right? So it adds some smoothness in, right? So over seven frames, there's adjustment. Over seven frames, there's another adjustment. And then uh, those different uh, amounts are then interpolated. So then it looks kind of smooth, right? That's kind of with any keyframe, that's what happens. Uh, so without adding any keyframes on, um, I can play this and we're getting all sorts of different animations, right? So the, the, the bars are moving all different, but they're just pulling from this one tool that's just throwing random numbers in. Now I don't have to have uh, that, you know, the shake on there. I could stop the shake, we could reset, 
and then we could just turn this and then we could get all different sorts of values, right? And all I'm doing here is with all in all of these, these are the new shape nodes, but it doesn't matter what node it is. Like I said, it's just a value, right? In all of these, I'm just in the modifier, they're all pulling from that same tool, but they're just using different uh, easing curve profiles, right? So they're all just slightly different. Uh, as I go through these, they're all just slightly different. But then when I have the, oh, and this one value, they, it looks very different, right? It looks kind of cool. So I could add keyframes onto here, or what I could do is take all this, copy it, and a part of how pasting works in Fusion is it'll take everything, and when you paste it, it'll be like its own little isolation. Obviously, it can't use the same names, so it'll put like an underscore one, right? And because I'm pasting everything the same, all the parameters will change the same. So I have this group, and then I just had to put on a little transform so that it moves its position. But then I can add on another group and then do it again, add on another group. And because I was using that modifier of shake, one of the cool things you can do is you can go in and you can change the seed. And seed is just to get random values um, with a different starting point, essentially, is probably the easiest way to say it. It's just random values, but you're picking a different pile of random values, right, um, to start to do it. So then when we when we play this now, now we got values moving all over the place. But all I did is I just set up one, I copied and pasted it two, and now I just changed the seed value, and now we have stuff that's moving all over the place. If you're curious on how we got the little lines here, uh, all I did is I have a black background. I went into a, a, a TV, which gives me scan lines, reduce the scan line number. Um, and this is, you know, if you're just curious on how I, how I did that. Uh, I then put it into a bitmap, but I invert the bitmap, right? Because so then I have the values that I can now pull so I get bigger chunks instead of little chunks. Because if I was to just take this straight in, I would just get a bunch of like little lines. So, I, but I wanted big lines. So then I pull in my, my bars right? These are my bars that are moving, right? That are coming out of the uh, renderer. And now I cut them with that little line from the scan line. Instead of making it the scan line, I cut with the scan line. And then I place all that into a, uh, a background with the mask. And then I just added a little gradient and turned the gradient and go up and down. And then that's kind of how I got that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm super excited to see 2020 finally coming to an end here. Uh, I'm hoping going into 2021, we get back to normal life. We're not all locked down at our houses. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, stay safe, guys. It's kind of weird right now. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.